the very first image of a black hole was released last year. To make that picture, over 5 petabytes of data, or 5 million gigabytes, were required from 8 different telescopes and telescope arrays. That data was put on hard drives and all transported manually to two different locations, where it was combined to form the famous image. But why did they need to ship physical data? Why could they not just use the fastest communication network in world history? The internet. It turns out that once you start getting to terabytes of information, it can actually be faster to physically transport data than it is to use the internet. It's always hard for me to get my head around that fact, so I decided to set up a little race. After spending my summer here in Colorado, it's time to return to Tucson for the fall semester. And while I drive back, I'll be carrying this one terabyte hard drive, which is 1,000 gigabytes, or for comparison, about 200,000 copies of Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. I'll also start an upload from here and see how much data I can transfer to Tucson before I arrive. The goal is to show that physically moving the information is faster than our internet upload. We'll keep you updated with the loading bar at the top of the screen, and for now I need to finish packing, but tomorrow morning, the race is on. Well, it's currently around 4 a.m. here and I'm about to head out, but first I thought it would be a good time to mention the different speeds involved in this race. The average upload speed in the United States in 2020 is around 52 megabits per second, although that number is highly variable. There are 8,000 megabits in a gigabyte, so 52 megabits per second translates to 0 0.0065 gigabytes per second, or about 15 seconds of 1080 video downloaded per second. Then there are another 1,000 gigabytes in just one terabyte, so now you can start to really see how slow the internet can be with large amounts of data. While this is a problem in 2020, it used to be much, much worse. Just 10 years ago, the average internet upload speed was not 50 megabits per second, but 4. Another decade before that, the answer wasn't even in megabits per second, but kilobits per second. No matter who wins today, the internet has been gaining ground for years. But hey, let's get this started. Here we are in New Mexico, and as you can probably tell, it is pretty empty, but that actually gives us an excuse to talk about a couple of the other reasons you might want to physically transport data. With this race, we're already covering the topic that it might just be faster, but you also might want to securely send information without putting it on the internet. And finally, there might just not be an internet connection, which ironically enough, I do not have one here in New Mexico. The idea of physically handing someone data, even just walking across the hall, has become jokingly referred to as SneakerNet, and it's become so widespread that Amazon actually has a service for this. They'll send you something called a Snowball, which can hold up to 80 terabytes of information, and then ship it wherever you need it. But if 80 terabytes aren't enough, they also have a truck called a Snowmobile that can hold up to 100 petabytes of data, where a petabyte is 1,000 terabytes. That could hold up to 2 million copies of a standard length movie. USPS and Google also have robust sneaker net systems, but for now it's time to get on to the next stop. While we've been talking about sending data by cars and planes, there's always another option. Pigeons. This was originally suggested as an April Fool's joke, but flash memory cards are now small enough that they can be transported by carrier pigeon. With modern technology, one pigeon can carry hundreds of gigabytes of data. Test runs have even been conducted, and it's been shown that a carrier pigeon can beat an internet connection. Unfortunately, packet loss can occur when birds go missing. I'm currently here in Socorro, New Mexico. While to most people, this is just a small town in basically the middle of nowhere, to astronomers it's the gateway to one of the most impressive observatories in the world, the VLA, or Very Large Array. Composed of 27 operational dishes, the VLA uses a technique called interferometry. The signals from all 27 of those individual dishes can be combined to effectively create one very large radio telescope. The device that combines those signals is called a correlator, and the VLA correlator is actually in this building right back here. That black hole image we talked about earlier was made in a similar way to VLA data. Telescopes from around the world collected information about the black hole and combined that data to form what basically became one Earth-sized telescope called the EHT, or Event Horizon Telescope. But I still have to get back to Tucson, so check out our videos from when we visited the VLA last year. Once you've found a Saguaro, you know you've made Arizona. Unfortunately, this drive is not as easy as just pushing a button and waiting in an air-conditioned room for a data transfer, but that might change soon. We already talked about how in the last 10 years, internet speeds have gone up dramatically, and in another decade, 
50 megabits per second will hopefully seem laughably slow. There's some companies already working on 10 gigabit per second internet, or 200 times faster than the current average upload speed. While I don't see SneakerNet going anywhere anytime soon, it might not be necessary for only a terabyte of data in just the next few years. Thankfully, Tucson is right around the corner, so I will see you there. If you're interested in a little further reading, the webcomic XKCD by Randall Monroe has actually answered the question of whether the bandwidth of the internet will ever surpass that of FedEx. The short answer is probably not, but it's an interesting little read and we'll have a link in the description. Finally, finally, after 14 hours, I have successfully transported this one terabyte hard drive from Fort Collins, Colorado to Tucson, Arizona. I've also now stopped our internet upload, so let's see just how much data we were able to transfer while I was making the drive down here. 32%, 320 gigabytes. That means that physically transporting the data was more than three times as fast as uploading it over the internet. And that's just for one terabyte. If we wanted to use five terabytes, it would only be at 6%, and the road trip would have been 15 times as fast. This race is entirely dependent on the amount of data being transported and the speed of the internet connection. There are many variables and more than a couple assumptions that we've made. Using something like the postal service would have taken a few days instead of 14 hours, and internet speeds are never constant. But this does give us an example of SneakerNet beating the internet. But now it's time for a nap for both me and the computer.